so when you open up your bag of goodies with the air station, uh, you'll see that you've got a, a bunch of um, fittings. There's the um, air delivery pipes here, clamps, and um, that won't be in your bag of goodies. That's a, uh, an add-on that we put in, but all these pieces will. So we've now filled this up with uh, gravel or blue metal. You can see there's water. Um, it's completely filled now. This is why it was a good idea to tape it before so there's no dirt and grit and crap in there um, that's going to give you any grief on this step. And now with this piece, you just simply push it down in a place and then this clamp goes over the top like so and you've got a couple of washers here one large flat one and one smaller split washer so you put the uh, split washer up the top the flat one down the bottom and then you drop those into the um, uh, into the clamp there now this is the same process regardless of whether you have a single disc air station or a twin disc air station if you had a twin disc air station you would have another piece that comes up here and branches out like that so that you have a disc on either side but basically everything that i'm showing you now is um, uh, the same for the um, for the twins and there's also a different twin disc station that might have two side by side but the process of putting these clamps in and everything is all all the same if you didn't have the check valve kit, this is where you would put on your hose tail and that would go straight into there. Uh, but what we do when we, in most cases, send ours out is we put in these little check valves and that's a, a one-way valve. So if this is turned off when the, the membrane relaxes, it reduces any likelihood of water going into the membrane. These discs have got their own little uh, device that does that internally, but it's another, um, uh, just a, a good, safety mechanism to have another check valve. Now with these check valves, if you do use it, there's an arrow on there pointing, and that's the direction of the airflow. So in this case, this black fitting goes with the arrow going that way, because air is gonna come in through there. And you'll see that blows through, but if you go the other way, nothing happens. So you gotta to wanna to make sure that that's on the right way, because if it's not, then you're not gonna get any air going through and you're gonna over pressurize your air pump back at the, um, at the compressor end or the pump end. So that just simply screws into there like so. You don't have to over tighten any of these types of fittings and you don't need to use plumber's tape. And then we'll put this in here. Now this has got multi uh, stage hose tails. So if you're using the um, the three eight hose, you just leave it as is. If you're using the half eight or the five, or the, uh, sorry, the half inch or the five eight, then you chop off the, the shorter ones just to open it up so the um, uh, it doesn't unnecessarily um, restrict the airflow so that will go in there like so now with this one I do like to just give it a little bit of a nip up so again there's no need to to go overboard and they are plastic fittings after all but you just grab yourself a shifter and just give it a little bit more of a um, of a nip up just like that and Again, you, if you've got a disc without this riser, it just simply goes straight onto there and you screw it down. We use a riser in a, a, a sort of deeper or a dam where you've got sludge and crap on the bottom. Just lifts it up, for, lifts the disc up further than the sludge. These things sit up in the sludge anyway because of the, the large base, but it's a good idea to use these when you're going into um, deeper waters. And again, you just screw that up so that it's hand tight, it's not crazy tight. When it comes time to put the aerators in the water, you can use a little kayak, a boat if you're doing a larger installation. And the idea is, is that you have the hose in the boat with you and you feed it out as you go along. And then what you do is pull yourself out to where you think the air station's gonna go, um, hold the hose, cut it, and then um, connect it to the air station, um, connect it in the place again. And then what you do is paddle back out to where you're gonna drop it go a little bit further to allow for that spring and then you literally just um, drop it over the side and as long as it's uh, right way up when you drop it, it will land right way up in the water. Now if you've got the model with the uh, cabinet, you'll see there that that's what it looks like on the inside. Uh, so your exhaust fan is automatically connected. You have one plug that comes out, which just plugs into a power point. 
Now coming out of the cabinet you'll see these hoses, there's three hoses and you can see they've all designed to take a 3 8 inch hose and if you're using larger hose um, when you want to use longer runs uh, we also have half inch and 5 8 inch. Yours might come with one of these hose tails which is multi uh, staged to connect one into here and one into the larger hose or you might have a fitting like this which essentially will do the same thing. So depending on what fittings you've got depends on uh, and the hose thickness that you're using will depend on what you do with the um, changing over of these uh, fittings or not. And it's important to keep this hose in there. This is a heat resistant hose because when it runs back into the um, air pump, coming off the air pump, they, they run quite hot. So all those fittings there um, will get hot. And if you use a non-heat rated hose, it will melt the hose. You can see what we do when we set up a remote system. So this is uh, just a bit of a modification coming out of the uh, air pump going into a secondary manifold which then splits off into a single one inch line that in this case runs about 100 metres down to the dam down the bottom. So you have your large hose going into the manifold and then going out of there is the weight length of weighted hose going into the dam and that will sit with the valve box over the top of it like so with the hoses running underneath and in this case that will be landscaped in and from a maintenance point of view, in here you've got your air filter, so that simply screws undone and inside there's an air filter. Good idea to blast that out or stick it under the tap and give it a wash out every couple of months. If it gets uh, really dirty then you might need to do that more often, if it's clean then less often. Uh, good idea to always have a couple of those spares, what you can do is just take one back to the shed, blast it out, put a new one in there, stick the other one back in the shed and just cycle them through every, every few months or so. And when it comes to cleaning, what you'll, when you install it, what you normally end up with is something uh, like this, where you might have one open fully, a couple almost closed off completely, because what you're trying to do is get a similar looking boil uh, of bubbles on the water surface. And if you leave them all open like that, you'll inevitably end up with one or two of them working and the others won't because all the air will try and escape out through the shortest, shallowest run. So you balance these as the final part of the installation just to make sure that the bubbles are, are somewhat uniform. And then in terms of um, cleaning what's in the dam, what you do is you, you flex the discs. Again, do it at the same time when you do your, your air pump clean over, uh, clean out. So what you'll do is shut off two of the valves, open one up fully, and then do the same for the others so that all the air gets pushed through one air station and then you turn them back to where they were before you started and rebalance them again. That's a great idea to, uh, to, to push off any muck that might build up um, on them in the dam. It doesn't happen often because the rubber membranes are moving all the time anyway so there's not much um, chance of them um, uh, getting coated with crap. Uh, if they do get coated with crap what you'll find is the pressure gauge will build up and there's a pressure relief valve here so that if this gets um, too high that will actually pop off and, and start um, uh, making one hell of a noise and it will tell you that something's wrong, there's a blockage. And on the other side, if, you, if this is pumping away and there's no air coming out and you check the pressure gauge and it's down to zero, it means that the seals inside here, inside the pistons, are gone and that means that you need to do what's called a rebuild kit. So the pump will still work but all the air sort of escapes out where the seals uh, are worn out. And so what you do with a rebuild kit is take this off and then um, uh, replace the seals and piston cups and that's something that you can do yourself or you can uh, send it back to us to do. Uh, so that's the internals of the air pump. Let's show you what it does when the um, pressure relief valve kicks in. So here you can see the pump's pumping away, all the air valves are open. If I start closing them down, you'll notice that the um, pressure gauge will go up and if it reaches too high a pressure, that will happen. So that's what your pressure relief valve is there to do. Now you can see here that there's more air escaping out of the, uh, the centre air diffuser than what there is out of the... Yeah, the centre one's probably the most powerful and the one over this side is the least powerful. So what we'll do is turn the centre one down a little bit to allow more air to open up out of the, um, the one that's struggling a bit and just balance them out as best we can. Now when you do do when you do do these changes, it's very small uh, changes that you make. So you might only turn it about that much and then just have a look and see if it's made a difference. If it hasn't made a difference, you might turn it down a little bit more and then just see what it does. And that probably looks 
pretty good there. So you can see that's the sort of uh, setups that you do. And you can see the pressure's not huge. This is running about 100 metres back to where the um, air compressor is. And you can see that we're, um, we're not even at 5 psi. So they're very low, low pressure units, which is great. Um, and that's balanced it out. So they're more even now.